Okay. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the Simon Fairfield Public Library Trustees meeting, uh, Tuesday, September 24th, 5 p.m. It is now 5.04, I believe. Uh, we have a quorum. So uh, on the meeting, the minutes from August 27th, I see there were some uh, suggested edits that just came in. So let's open it up to that. Or do we need to do a motion and second and then open it up? Well, we would uh, move the one that was just sent out in uh, 3.30 or so. Right. Today, um, to, to use that one. Oh, okay. So you're presenting that one instead of the, the original one. Yeah. Okay, all right. So then I will accept them. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. So moved. Uh, do I have a second? I could, I can second it. I wasn't at the meeting though. Though I read the minutes. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So discussion or questions or comments in case people didn't really have a chance to read. It just happened like an hour or so ago. The um, Are we good? Yep. Okay. Well, then uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 All right, any, uh, uh, God, my brain is just not working. <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? <laughs> All right, so moved. Uh, minutes have been approved unanimously. So moving on to the financial report. Um, as of yesterday, um, we're 23.08% through the fiscal year and have spent 24% of our total operational budget. So we're roughly where we want to be. Um, mm -hmm. are there any questions on this? I'm just, again, I'm assuming that the ones that are zero, oh, the ones that are 100%. It's the only one is CW Mars. That's CW the one Mars. I, I asked that's that before. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the one time thing, right? Yep. Okay. I asked that. I know I asked that last month. Okay. That's the only question I had. That's for trustee accounts. These are officially reconciled now. Um, finally okay. got reconciled with Gene. So um, Danielle signed the finance report earlier today, and I submitted it to the MBLC. So we should be fully certified for next fiscal year. Um, not a lot of movement other than we got um, some donations coming into the building donations with interest account because the friends are, you know, getting some sponsorships and things off the ground before the auction actually starts. Um, there was oh, well, one that one there where it's, uh, what happened there where it's a current balance is negative 509. Oh, that's the story with regular donations um, from last month. Um, we've committed, um, we we still committed um we still have nine hundred twenty two dollars and forty nine cents committed from um regular accounts towards archival expenses um and then we've got the reservation from that account also to be added to the capital campaign um so the solution to that is just to stop spending until we get the account back up to where we want it to be whenever we're you know, start to build because then we'll want the money there. Okay. I see it. Gotcha. Again, from last month. Isn't that a discussion from last month of yep. doing that? Okay. 
And we got our grant disbursement from the Greater Worcester Community Foundation for the Carrick grant. So we have an income of $1,189.50 added to that to bring the balance up to a little over 3000 Nice. So I did the little summary at the bottom again to show how much, you know, money accounts combined is available. Um, and that's here at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And that's my finance report. Looks good. Questions? Hearing none, we can move forward. Um, circulation in August was not as robust as it was in July, um, but it still was an increase. Um, we had... Um, Hold on, let me scroll back up. August borrowed by our patrons. Okay, yeah. So we had an increase of over 100 in evergreen circulations um, over last year, um, around 300 in digital circulations. Um, it was just a slow month. You know, the door counter counted more people than the previous year, but August felt slow. And mm. I don't know if it was because, you know, it, it seems like Everyone's been talking about being overcommitted this time of year. The weather's been great. People have been going to festivals and things. And so library traffic was just kind of down. Yeah. Um, but that's okay because it's about to get cold. I turned the heat on yesterday. <laughs> oh, no, not yet. <laughs> it's 66 in the house right now, and I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm the basement does it socks. here. You've got to turn it on early or else it gets cold. <laughs> I have a question about the circulation. Um, if you go up to the top of the, um, yeah. So when it's collections to everyone and um, is 19, let's say for audio, and then, or this is in 2023, but, and then borrowed by our patrons is 74. So that's just, how so what's the total of those i mean that doesn't make sense to me you well, know i was getting you don't have a lot of audio cds so we yeah, only no, it doesn't matter that but the thing I mean, is, anything I'm... under books it says uh 2500 were uh 99 and then but our patrons borrowed 2164 so why or that one it makes a little more sense there you but, add these numbers include ILLs from other libraries. So if it comes in on hold for you, um, then it would count towards this number. It's borrowed by our patron, but it's not necessarily coming from our collection. So this kind of represents what our patrons are doing. Oh. And the and that's black the column represents what our materials are doing. Okay. So like the story behind the audio is we don't have a lot of them. So we did loan 19 of them, but you know, that demand was filled by other libraries in the consortium for our patrons because our patrons borrowed 74. Mm -hmm. From other places. Yep. Right. Okay. So patrons. Well, they could have come from other places or our collection. Okay. Right. That's why these numbers don't really represent a total with each other because we're okay. talking about I see. Um, yeah. different things. That's, that, that's what I thought. Presented it this way in the past because it's kind of confusing, but it is an interesting story because you can see our audio collection is weak. Our book collection is strong. Our DVD collection is strong. Um, the equipment and the laptops are usually going to be the same number because we're loaning them from our collection, mm -hmm. but only to our patrons. So they're not going anywhere else. Um, music, we obviously have a really strong collection because of the archive boxes we've been doing. So we loan a lot of those, even though our patrons don't necessarily borrow a whole lot of them. Huh? That's interesting. But I'm hoping well that changes. Um, a little bit soon because I've ordered two boom boxes to circulate. Um, <laughs> straight up CD players that patrons will be able to check out and then use for whatever they want. <laughs> cool. 
We didn't oh, have one when Ellie did the wedding at the farm, but we will have one moving forward. Yeah, but um, that that sort of I, a, a follow up question there. Um, the father of the groom was the one that put everything together for us. And um, because I was trying to copy stuff and then playing it on a boom box because I'm old and um, and then he's the same age of. Uh, uh, as Eben and I are, but um, he said, oh, well, you you use Spotify and um, uh, <laughs> the one that began was with P, I can't remember that one, and you play it through your phones and you don't have to have electricity. Pandora. And, pa yeah, Pandora, and you don't have to have electricity or anything like that. <laughs> so I don't know if you have a way of, of you know, creating uh directions for how one does that i didn't have to do it at all i just we just told um the father of the groom what we like for music because we just like old oldies and stuff so uh and then it turned out he liked the same ones oh so we had a good playing thing you know and, and there was threats from my daughter and my nieces and nephews and stuff like that <laughs> saying oh well we'll just do our Pandora stuff and, and tough <laughs> luck to you and um and uh and they did they like the music too so so I I don't know if that's that impacts uh you at all but um uh, the the Pandora and Spotify is that what it's called Spotify oh, you can though? connect those to anything yeah so you can have that connected yeah. Yeah, we use Google Play Music at my house, so you can ask the Google speaker to play you whatever it wants, but it'll play on speaker group, so then a kid will go into a different room and ask it to play a Burger Dog from Bluey, and then the next thing you know, you're listening to Burger Dog. But uh, right. yeah, that's right. how we call it a CD archive, um, because most music consumption now is happening digitally, um, and the things that we're holding on to are kind of, we're, I mean... I, I thought it would be a fun thing to do because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not a big investment and it allows us to, you know, contribute to the consortium and to the cultural value of the region without a lot of effort doing something mm -hmm. that no one else is really doing. I think that's so, a good idea. I think the, it sounds uh, like fun. These discs are, a lot of them are obscure. They're old. And, you know, some people just want to listen to a CD. I, I, I'm. I could go back to my Green Day phase. I could get some more Green Day. My husband didn't like that, but I thought it was great. I love Green Day. Anyhow, I digress. But I can't tell you how much time I've spent over the last couple of weeks obsessing about what to buy in terms of boom boxes because it is really hard not to buy crap. Um, right whenever you're buying this kind of thing and you don't want mm -hmm. it to be too pricey, but at the same time you want it to be durable and good enough to, you know, circulate at a library. So it's like, uh, and then they give you all these stories, these, uh, you know, how great their product is. And then it's like, you've got to read the fine print on it mm -hmm. and the specifications for something well, like I, that. Yeah. For sure. be when um, we were looking also to buy a boom box, but um, we never did. Um, the one my mother had, which, and she died, I don't know, 30 years ago or something like that, um, uh, was not up to date enough. And also it, it, the batteries wouldn't work in it and stuff. But um, we, we looked at uh, the Walmart in, in New Hampshire that we go to because it's tax free. And they were all at, you know, at least a hundred dollars and we weren't willing to spend that amount of money. So that's what was nice about the things working through a telephone or, you know, a cell phone uh, for, for us, but. But you still have to have a speaker. Yeah, they had speakers. Yeah. Um, there was some uh, 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 sports club in Baltimore where they live in that area. And um, and he was friends with them and they said, well, we're not doing anything that weekend so you can borrow our speakers and and, oh, and that nice. worked fine. So um, because the ba uh, they just took batteries, the speakers took batteries. Right. So it, I have a little nice. rechargeable 
speaker that works good for me. For anything. But anyhow, I digress. Let's, yeah. let's move on. Well, so thank you. That I mean that you did a good explanation of the of this funny numbers here. Funny <laughs> numbers. Yes. Any other questions on this? No, no, no. I think we're good. I understand it perfectly now. Okay. So well, I remember. Um, Scroll through the rest real quick. Um, if you read the newsletter last week, you may have noticed, you know, programming is really surging. We're trying to get a lot of things off the ground. Marco is starting a short film viewing club on the fourth Wednesdays of the month. Um, I'm starting a science fiction film, film club on the first two days, Tuesdays of the month. And that came out of my 25th anniversary Matrix showing I did where I had zero registrants, but then five people showed up and then they said they wanted to do it again. So we'll be watching Blade Runner <laughs> next Tuesday. Mm, um, that's a good we, one. Yeah, we talked about it a lot after watching The Matrix. So I was like, that'll be our next film. Um Lisa's new book club is running. It's the first Monday nights of the month. Um, it's focusing on, you know, uh, like, not horror, but like thrilleries, chillery kind of things. Mm. Um, she's also going to host a Disney trivia night on October 17th. Um, Marco has gotten Riddlebrook Farm to come to a presentation on October 1st on annuals that thrive in cold Massachusetts climates so that you can have, you know, spring flowers popping up. Mm. And that's already been registered to almost capacity. So that was a winner. Um Young Scientist STEM program will begin in October. Fall Storytime is underway. Robert Rye Vest will be here the night before Halloween with the Tricks or Treats program. Um, and kids are going to be invited to come in costume so he can kind of teach them how to like mime and move with their costumes while they're trick or treating. Um, and we're having the Collaborative Community Skills programs, which maybe you've seen pop up on social mm -hmm. media and, um, you know, flyers on public safety and that's going to be a two-part series on october 24th and november 14th um so i hope we fill those up to capacity because we have the fire department the town health nurse and tri-valley all working with us um, yeah that's a really important uh um, an important uh event or information we're going to push it at Oktoberfest, and I'm going to set up a library table at the uh, fire department open house in October. Nice. And push it there as well. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the going back to the book clubs. Is there any interest, do you think, in having an afternoon book club? We, I mean, I think it's a great idea. The problem is all of our staff are just kind of tapped out on the number of books they can read. Um, <laughs> unless someone wants to start one that's independent of um, staff involvement. I I, I, I want to make a, a comment about the book groups. Um, I love it, the, the way Lisa announces them. Mm -hmm. on, I, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but um, I've seen it twice and she just uh, presents it. She, she reads, reads stuff, but she does it really well. <laughs> you know, she, mm -hmm. I would just fail at it myself, but um, she, she does a fantastic way of, of, of um, publicizing all the book groups that are happening. During yeah. The her, week or whatever. Um... She started that and she actually sent me an email last night asking if she thought it was worth continuing to do um, kind of that weekly summary of events that she's been putting on um, the Facebook. It's not a post. It's a story. It's different. So it disappears after a while. So we can like make a little announcement like that and then it won't be there forever. Um, but as soon as this meeting is over, I want to talk to her about trying to get it on a different platform as well, like seeing if we can like get a quick enough turnaround that it would be worth putting those on the Douglas Cable YouTube channel mm. and then sending a weekly email with the link to that video in it so that you would get a newsletter every month and then every week you would get her video summary of what's happening at the library this week mm. because I too think it is awesome. Yeah, I, I saw her on Saturday, I guess, and I, I did compliment it, compliment her on it. I, I think it's fantastic, too. I um, with a library auction coming up uh, eventually, 
we're trying to publicize that too. And I'm, I'm thinking, boy, if Lisa could, if we could provide Lisa with, you know, a, a daily thing for her to just <laughs> talk about, you know, she, I mean, she really does read perfectly. She, it's mm-hmm. not reading. It's she's talking to you. And yeah. It's- she has extensive experience with nonprofit outreach, community engagement and publicity, which is precisely why I've hired her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she's good. So it's Marco. Too. It's putting all my flyers to shame. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And see other publicity stuff. Um, we did create, um, we were even retooling the website just a little bit, tweaking it. Um, and we made two discrete programming pages. Um, so now there is a page for adult programs and a page for children's programs. You'll see the special like one-off things at the top and then all the recurring things at the bottom instead of having like all the book clubs mishmashed on one page. So it's right. hard to know what's for grownups or, or what's for kids. Um, all the no new logos and banners are live. Um, I'm poking the friends about potentially opening up a storefront where we can put the, um, logos and things and a catalog that people can kind of order on demand. Cause we've had some people ask for t-shirts, um, and stickers they can put on their water bottles. I guess that's a thing now. Um, water yeah. bottles. So, yeah. um. I'm hoping like that would be an easier way than trying to find a company that does bulk graphics and guess how many of this and that and the other we're, we're going to try to sell. Because if you set up one of these storefronts, it kind of just runs itself. You can send people to the link and they can buy whatever they want with your logo on it if they want to. Right. Um, my computer finally bit the dust. I don't think that's a surprise after the last few trustee meetings in the wonky <laughs> graphics. Um, but I've ordered the parts to build a new one. Um, and thanks to connections, because Lisa's husband works at Bryant University, who have just divested themselves of a pretty brandy new laptop collection because they update, I guess, on a yearly basis. We scored 15 newer end laptops Ooh. that are Windows 11 capable. So I am in the process of trying to get a nonprofit Microsoft domain so that we can then plug that information into TechSoup and get 15 Windows 11 licenses for cheaper than $110 a piece. Because then we'll have, right now we've got five laptops that we circulate among patrons. This would give us, I'm thinking probably five to keep for in-house use. Right. Then try circulating some outside the building, you know, like check out a laptop, take it with you. If you don't have internet, check out a mobile hotspot with it. Then you've got both, everything you need. Right. And Mm -hmm. one thing, um, thinking in terms of expanding on programming in that, um, if it comes to the point of offering some type of a program, workshop, whatever, where uh, the uh, participants would need to be connected to the internet, that would be awesome to have that. And people can just, you know, come and do it there. Um, I know, all right, here's a, an example. Um, my son who lives in Oxford, uh, he's involved with the soccer league and they have uh, all of the uh, volunteers, no matter who they are, have to take two trainings on um, uh, concussion uh, protocol and recognizing and responding to signs of child abuse or neglect. And so part of the problem has been getting the volunteers to agree to the time commitment and doing it on their own, but it was kind of like, well, if you can get a bunch of guys together, a bunch of people, whether it's men or women, to come together at the library and do it all together. So it would be good to have those on hand, you know, look into the future. If you're looking to offer some type of programming that's like a workshop or, a, you know, that kind of thing. And we you know, you're, talk- them- you know and- you're talking about... Um, uh, doing the safety uh, things, it, it, there's a possibility of expanding it to include um, uh, starting with first aid and things like that. 
having that available. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm excited by these. It's also, you know, like when we finally get Deb moved into this new room, um, and empty out this central room downstairs, we'll already have the hardware we need to turn it into a computer lab if we use these laptops for that as well. So oh, uh, yeah. we've got enough to do all three of these things. 15 computers is a lot of computers. It is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this whole big spiel about um, the MHEC is the next bullet point in my director's present or director's report. Um, but since yesterday, I've had the time to actually look into these contracts and figure out, you know, like how much cost savings there is to be realized. And uh, you can just ignore that bullet point. <laughs> What's MHEC? Um, it used to stand for the Massachusetts Higher Education Consortium. Now they've just rebranded it to MHEC. And it is the portal yeah. that you can go through if you work for the government in like, you know, public libraries, schools, or universities for procuring things. Um, and their spiel is that they get lower prices um, for you with these vendors by the bulk of the items that they sell. Um, but we're getting better discounts through Baker and Taylor than we are through Ingram on the MHEC contract. So it's it, it, it's kind of take it with a grain of salt, I think. Um, it is a really good resource for finding alternative vendors. Um, and I do want to see if we can get better pricing um, than WB Mason on some of our custodial supplies and like printer ink, office supplies, um, because there's a lot of those kind of vendors in the MHEC. Um, but I'm still kind of learning how to use it because the, the convention was Thursday. I was hoping that there would be, um, you know, like ADA engineering type, you know, mm. like facilities renovation folk there, but but there were not. But if mm. we ever want to buy furniture, they got us um, <laughs> yard equipment, lawn maintenance, window <laughs> treatments. I bet. <laughs> Right. They do have like some really awesome furniture. There's there's there was one product I really loved that was a um it was like a little nook that you could get in with like a little desk table in front of you. It had a little fan inside and a light. You close the door behind you and then you couldn't hear anything. It's like the whole expo just disappeared. <laughs> so I do think we need one of those. Yeah. You have to sign up for it. How do you what? When, who gets time in it? <laughs> I love um, it. The other just like procedural change I'm making right now is every school year, I like to kind of try to reset the loft rules to see what we can get away with. Um, last year, we ended up having to limit the teen loft to one preterm at a time because there were some hazing rituals that were going on <laughs> that were not okay. Um, but they have moved on. So I'm optimistic that, you know, if we kind of, uh, I've been trying to, you know, like help staff come up with ways to deal with the kids and come up with, you know, policies for, you know, what lines to draw because they, you know, like every year there's a theme and this year, the theme is trash the place. It's like, if you eat a piece of candy, that wrapper has to go in the floor. If you have a drink, you have to spill it. I mean, it's just every bloody day. Um, <clears throat> but we're gonna what I want to do is open the loft back up to five patrons at a time, but also start having a you know harder stance on this is a public space, you treat us respect. Yeah. If we ask you to stop, you only get one chance before you're asked to leave for the day mm -hmm. um and come back another time. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that makes the teen room accessible to the teens again, at least for a little while. Right. We play this game every year. I know, and you hate to, I don't know, be the police and let give them a space. God knows they need a space. Um, hopefully they'll be a little more responsible. They need a space. I just literally, I want them to stop hurling monster energy drinks at each other because it's ruined like a whole shelf of books. 
That's insane. Well, what's this policy? I'm not bringing food and drinks into the library. Food and drink is allowed, except for like a specific cohort who I have told you can't bring food and drink in here anymore. Because well, then if they're hurling you... drinks and food at each other, then they can't bring food and drinks in there. Oh, they cannot. But I don't want to make it a blanket policy either because, I mean, a lot of the people who come in here come with a drink or a snack. I know. I understand that. You can make it just for the loft. Right. The loft hasn't been an issue yet. The The, the group that um, makes the messes prefers the juvenile area. Are you kidding me? Just... <laughs> They like the little low round table. They get around it. They spread out their stuff. They tried to bring in popsicles a few weeks ago. I was like, no, <laughs> get the popsicles out of here. Um, but yeah, it's fun. We we want them to be here. And I'm hoping to, you know, like as the school year you know, gets off to like as people settle into their routines and we start seeing the rhythm of when they're coming in and staying hopefully being able to springboard it into the addition of some kind of teen programming because right now mm. yeah <clears throat> they, they're such a hard community to engage so why not engage the ones who are already here i know i know they're just gonna start trashing the place <laughs> stay off my lawn and that's the end of my director's report. Okay. Well, that was a great report, Justin. Ready. Uh, I think we're ready to move on to old on to old business. Accessibility next steps. Um, I actually reached out to DCAM this morning. Um I, I reached out to their um the just their contact on the webpage for the agency outlining our situation, the history, sending the timeline that Ellie made. Ellie made a timeline of of all of the attempts that have been made to mm. um brute force, you know, library renovation through and you know, inquiring what their agency can do to help. So hopefully I'll get a response from them since I'm not getting a response from Matt. What's well, DCAM? That's disheartening. You had to ask that question, didn't you? <laughs> I, I think I know what it is. I wrote it down. Um, it's uh, Division of Capital Asset Management and Main Maintenance. Maintenance. And um, actually, Matt had brought it up at last month's. Um, I didn't go to it this month because I haven't really done anything either. Um, but um, at last month's. Um, uh, BFCC meeting. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. uh, DCAMM, double M. Just put that in there. There we go. <clears throat> but other than that, I don't have anything else on accessibility. Um, yeah. Been working on other things this month. Well, um, on the, the, do you want to send out that? Um, I don't know if the trustees would be interested in, in looking at it. Just for me, I just wanted a, a list on less than a page that <laughs> gives you sort of the history of what's going on. And 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 my f feeling is that we've been doing this for. Um, close to 30 years or something like that. And I just wanted to have it on paper somewhere. Mm -hmm. So um, so would you like it sent to the trustees or? Uh, I, I can forward it out if y'all want me to. Sure. Absolutely. I uploaded it into the renovation Google Doc file. Oh, cool. Or Google folder, the, the folder. I uploaded it to the folder. Okay, I'll find it somewhere. But I'll send a hyperlink too. All right. Or the, the document, I mean. I, I, I'm tired. We <laughs> we went camping this weekend and it was a role play camp where we pretended to be hobbits for three days. Oh God, um, heaven help us. With three little kids. That was challenging. Oh uh, God. It was Gandalf. I hope you were in a warm area because it was awful this weekend. I no, no, we were we were at um ye old wow. commons in Charlton. See, there you oh. go. That's exactly how I figure them to be in the little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, it was um, actually a really fun event. It was all centered around, you know, like these Hobbit families coming together for a yearly festivity where they make mischief and party together and have fun. And the kids, my oldest kid had the time of his life. Um, the two littles didn't really know what was going on. And me and <laughs> Carrie were busy chasing them around enough that, you know, it was it it it, it was it was fun. That goes that's a long way from when I was 17 and I first started reading them. <laughs> we were all considered weird if we were reading The Hobbit. I know we're still considered weird, but you know, there's enough of us weird well, out there and the internet. I'm not gonna comment so we can Justin, find okay? each other. <laughs> there were people there from California, Arizona, Florida. I mean, people wow. Can't wow. dress up as mm. hobbits for the weekend. Oh my god. Wow. And there were character building workshops the like the night before because you're you're not supposed to break character the whole time you're there. You're supposed to be your hobbit character. Um I was Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to have to leave the room for a minute. Right. So the outdoor brickwork um, is uh, before the <laughs> Capitol Committee. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Nothing to report there, although I did meet some uh, vendors at the MHEC Expo um, who do do this kind of thing. Um, so that is one thing I did found. So before, you know, we actually get to the time to pull the trigger, I'll probably pursue quotes from more than one source. Mm, for um, sure. Interior painting began yesterday when I was writing this newsletter, and today it is done. Um, Brian Lavalley's patched up that corner that was peeling and flaking off um, where the radiators were, the children's playroom. It was especially really bad, and it all looks brand new now. It's We're very happy. Um, his next... Oh, and the main stacks are also done. They were done by a volunteer. So we've got a lot of fresh paint. Great. And um, his next thing is going to be to install shelves. Um, we're going to mount some of the cantilever steel frames that I pilfered from Grafton around the walls in um, Deb's future office. And I want to put one up in the DVD room against the wall where the radiator was so that I can move paperbacks out there and make some room in the main collection for more fiction. Sounds really good. And then the other thing is um we he he came in, we've been sort of talking back and forth about this, but the problem with downstairs right now in the archive where I'm at, well, I mean you can just look them up. I'd like to just point this up. Um, is that <laughs> there is nothing between those floorboards and the upstairs floor except for the thin layer of carpet. So all of the dirt. And the dust that seeps mm -hmm. through the carpet squares just comes out of those cracks and then collects on Rebecca's stuff. Gag. Um, and it's also really, really loud. Um, here in the archive, it's not so bad because it's underneath the main stacks and there's not a lot of stomping and tromping around that goes in the main stacks. But where Deb's going to be, it's a much different issue because that's the highest traffic area of the library. Um, so sh we... Brian thinks that he can put together a quote um, or a proposal to fairly economically install some a little bit of insulation that has some soundproofing capacity and then just do drywall boards, not over the whole ceiling, but just between the whatever those are called, the cross beams. So uh, there would be like one thin strip of um, drywall or plasma, whatever it is, uh, running between those things. And we think it would look really good. Um, and it wouldn't be, you know, as expensive as having to, you know, install a drop ceiling over the whole thing or um, putting in the, uh, what the, you know, like ceilinging over the whole thing, you know, to the boards. If we so do it don't... between them, then we'll still preserve the beams. You'll still be able to see that woodwork, and then the planks will be covered up by something to mitigate the sound and the dust penetration. Hmm. 
So he wants to quote that out for us um, before we do um, the electrical work and start moving in furniture. Okay. So a drop ceiling doesn't is would be more expensive than, and I also like the idea of having some of those uh, beams exposed. Mm -hmm. It'll make a good prototype project too, because I mean, the drop ceilings in the other part of the basement are going to need replaced within the next 10 years or so. They're old and starting to fall apart. And rather than replace those with more of the same, I mean, if that solution works in here really good, then we could do that in there as well. And um, it, it would be an interesting, unique architectural look, I think, that would add to the value of the space. Because right now mm -hmm. it kind of just looks like a dungeon. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. Um, yeah. Um, do, we don't need to vote on that, right? He's going to give us a quote. Yeah, he'll give us a quote. And, you know, anything that is done is going to be done out of our general repairs and maintenance budget, mm -hmm. which we just already have. We've spent right. about half of it. Um, Sweet. We've spent half of it, and what all have we done? We got the radiators removed. The old heating system is gone. Um, the walls have been patched. The baseboards are gone. Um, I know he's done other stuff. I just can't remember what at this point. Oh, the sinks, fixing the sinks and the plumbing, because all the plumbing valves needed replaced because they were all seized up. Mm. But just kind of working down the list and fixing things as we find them. All right, sounds good. Look forward to getting that. So, are we in another to... small thing, he's going to price out as well. Is I don't, there used to be a big oak sliding door um, that slid between the main stacks and the main foyer. Um, and we still have the door, it's in Deb's future office and I can't move it into the attic because it's too big because it's not a narrow door it's a really wide one made for sliding up and down a track mm. and we're gonna find out how much it will cost to put that back up um yeah. because it's neat oh I did not know that Ellie is frozen sorry we need to interrupt I just thought you should know wait so is she on the phone right now uh, but she's not on the phone now. Oh, I have to try to log back in. No. Oh. Oh, we lost Ellie. Oh. oh. So sorry. What happened? Is that why she tried to call was that? Um she she just froze, I guess, and now she's not in the participant list anymore. Okay. Which means now we're under quorum. Well, we didn't uh, vote on anything. Nope. And, but the thing is, we need to hear from Ellie about the friends. And stuff. I'm going to try to call her. I'm going to mute myself real quick. Okay. So, talk about library stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody reading anything good? I'm reading Cutting the Stone. Oh, wow. That, I read that some years ago. That was it's great. pretty intense. I'm, yeah. I've got a lot of people. I've got four people waiting for it, and I'm only twenty five percent through it. And, I'm and like, it's I a big. To. It's a long book, and it's a lot. It's something you can't skim through because there's so much information in it. I'm hoping I can finish it before I have to give it up. <laughs> I know I hate that. <laughs> you have to get back on the list. That's Try it. Remember, remember what happened. What happens in the meantime? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm hoping I can. I'm saying I gotta read, 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 and then all these things come up every day, and I'm like, I'm not reading. 
<laughs> I, I was reading uh, Drew Faust Gilpin's Necessary Trouble a few weeks oh, ago. Yes. And that was, but then I, then we had company and then I, then I lost it again. So I have to, <laughs> you know, get it back again. That's one, one thing with, with um, e-books, right? You had, yeah. I know. Um, because you can't renew them. But that was really interesting. Well, you can renew them as long as there's no one else waiting for it. Well, right. yeah. But I just checked on my, If you remember. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just checked on it. And it, it said there were four people waiting. I know I can put the... <laughs> Last time I mentioned it, the next day I had the book <laughs> ready. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> I need to wait my turn. I'm no. reading yours for the taking, which is pretty interesting. Yours? What is it again, Kate? Yours for the taking. Gabrielle Korn. I think someone recommended it to me. And it's kind of like climate change is... You know, it's kind of futuristic, but Earth-based climate changes. Oh, yours for the tanking? Yeah. It's a, sort of a feminist sci-fi. Sounds right up. Very interesting. My alley, yours for the taking. I'm going to write that down. If I can get the... I have 10 more days, then you can have it. Looks like you'll be <laughs> well, I, have to, I have eight more days and I have to be done with this book. So. <laughs> oh, no, I guess people are waiting. So. Thank you. Yours for taking. I enjoy books like that. Yeah, I do too. Um, I don't know if people are into anything. Um, I just finished uh, Boy's Life, which is a little bit, uh, and I can't remember the. It's the same author who wrote Swan Song, um, but it's a really, really good story about just a little bit, little couple of little things that are a little off as far as reality, you know, <laughs> what you conceive as reality. But other than that, it's uh, four boys who are 12 years old in 1964, and it's their summer, and uh, it's just crazy. It's a lot. It's really sounds like you're good. Yeah, but I don't see anybody. We hear you. Does that matter? Uh, no, okay. you'll you'll be able to hear the audio. Can you okay. hear us? That sounds. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh right. yes. Okie doke. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Ellie's back. All right. Thank goodness. <laughs> Where are you in the meeting? We're we're at Grants, Grants. Capital Campaign. And okay. Well, I wanted I wanted to go back to I had something for the outdoor brickwork um, just that um, because I'm on Capitol and uh, we haven't discussed anything yet. But um, uh, uh, Mike mentioned that uh, if, if a, a request is um, over fifty thousand dollars, it needs uh, to be um get at least two quotes on it and also that uh, it has to go through the BFCC process as well. Okie doke. So I, I'm just passing that information on. Okay. So that's all I have there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. We'll make that happen. All right. Let's go okay, back. so where are you now? We're down to under grants. Capital um, campaign. Okay. Oh. Capital campaign is up to 244, 383. Um, and now that these numbers are reconciled with Gene, I've updated the website and the sign. Okay, good. Um, uh, under other character disbursement. And we got our character. 
grant. Um, and we're also submitting um, cultural council grant applications. And a lot of people just submit them on their own and expect to use us as a venue. So those are also rolling in. Um, so it's, it's exciting. Yeah. All right. So under friends, we have the auction. That's a big one. What's happening, Allie? Yeah, we had a, a meeting on Saturday and um, it's, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff in, in the whole auction. Um, so I think there's over 200 items okay. and um, yeah, but um, uh, Donna is, Donna Metz is concerned that she doesn't, we usually have about um, 40 or to 60 bidders. And is that too much stuff um, to have on an auction? Although she, she just cut it off on, um, as of last Friday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So um, she wasn't going to accept any more because a lot of times things come in at the last minute. So, right. Um, right. but that was, a, that was a good point on her, 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 she's familiar with auctions and stuff where I, I, the rest of us aren't, but uh, so we'll see how everything goes. It's, um, uh, it's, I, you know, I don't know. Did you uh, put in something for your, the Adirondacks chairs again? Cause they, they did chat about those saying, Oh, yes. I don't think we've seen them yet, but did you? Yes. Yes. Okay. I good. Donna and I, she was going to use yeah. last year's information. So we're good. Okay, good. Yeah. And um, I can't remember anything else about it, but we're we're we're, we're working very hard on it, and uh, and uh, I, I think things will go pretty smoothly. Uh, bid often and high. <laughs> Again, um, hoping that all of the trustees are able to support this worthy cause. In any way yeah. that you can. Did, yeah, as um, I think in one of the reports already, um, Justin did mention there was like thirteen hundred blah 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 that um, represented um, uh, two five hundred dollar donations and a two hundred and fifty dollar donation and a twenty dollar um, from selling. Uh, a raffle tickets. So all of that is going into the building fund. Yeah, well. that'll show up next uh, month because I didn't um, turn that over until today. Um, and I prepared yeah. the finance report yesterday. Yeah. So um, I thought I had read it somewhere, but um, that's, that's exciting too. So, um, uh, you know, just keep your fingers crossed that we, um, we do well. And we are planning on having a, 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 a gathering on the 23rd of October, which is when the auction ends at five o'clock. And we'll have some refreshments at the library since they'll be open, <laughs> which is great. So um, that uh, if any of you would like to come, we, we would love to have you. I, uh, I just have to let you know that I'm we're going to be gone from October 23rd to the 30th. So I have to let Donna know about delivering the chairs because the chairs okay. can't be delivered till after October 30th when we get back. So, okay. Um, I'll well, get yeah, and, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Go ahead, yeah. All right, so I'll get. In well, touch I'll with put that gathering yeah. on the library public events calendar too. Oh, good, excellent, yeah. Because uh, um, myself and Caroline Dorval, the head of the uh, Friends, um, will be taking the money. Uh, you know, uh, cashing out for everybody. So if we remember, and I'll try to remember to tell. Um, Carolyn, this too, that uh, will say if, you know, people um, pay for the, the chairs that um, uh, that they won't be available till October 30th. 
after October 30th. But you know what? I'll get in touch with Donna. I mean, I'll have okay. my, I'll I'll have access to my email. Um and if she can just email me the details of the whoever gets the winning bid, we can just get in touch with them. Yeah. All right, I'll do that. But we Don't worry about it. Forward. Don't worry about it, Ellie. Not a worry. All right. Well, I'm going to be in the midst of all of that, so. Uh, <laughs> Not to worry, dear. And I don't know what else is on. Is there anything else? Oh, Oktoberfest. I forgot to ask. We have, um, um, and I don't know, Justin, I'm not going to be, I, I'm out at the National Parks out west um, uh, <laughs> October 1st through 10th, so I won't be here for Oktoberfest, but um, we have the Boy Scouts Troop 134 helping set up, but they usually are busy at the end, and depending on whether it's rainy or, or not, you know, um, I don't know if, uh, if you need any help or, because I usually, if you do, or I do, or whatever, for, for the cleanup, um, Kate, is, is Kate going to be around, or is... Um, I'm actually away that weekend. Yeah, see, <laughs> and I don't know if Dana's around. Dana's a pretty good person to break down stuff, too, so... I also but, bought some help with um, our other supplies budget. I bought a dolly. Um, ooh, so ooh. that ought to make moving the book crates out so much easier. <laughs> and then oh, moving yeah, them back in. Um, you know, hopefully there won't be as many. But I, I, I'm not daunted by having to clean up after Oktoberfest. Because there's plenty of time to do it. And um, my family's right. usually here. Yeah, we've there's got, always strangers who offer to help. We're going to yeah, be around yeah. in between soccer games. But if there's a, a see, I think we sort of um, stop um, if there is a parade. And I think they have been trying to have a parade this year. Um, and they didn't have it last year, maybe because it rained. I don't know. Um so that that's when nobody wants to help you, you know, and I, I <laughs> would go a stupid person and say, can you help us carry these books in? And they, they look at me blankly and, and that would, that would so be what time, it, no. Allie, let me ask you this. What time do you need help bringing? Well, what time do they need help bringing in the books? I, I think, between two and three, we usually get tired of everything. All right. <laughs> I will check. Let me check my. Oh, God, we got yeah, crazy. Yeah, Carolyn, Carolyn um, Dorville is the one. I'll send you her email uh, if you want. Um, because okay. she's the one that's uh, uh, doing the whole, she's taking charge of the Oktoberfest. So. Okay. Okay, send me her, um, because I'm, uh, you know, offering my husband's, <laughs> he's okay. You're not, if he, if he's not down there, it's sort of hard for him to get to it too, you know. That's you sort true, of have because to be... we're in between, all right, I've got crazy stuff with, um, yeah. All right, so I don't want to get into it. I don't want to waste time. Um, that's October 5th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so... Um, um, maybe we could. We got... I'm looking at the... We have hockey and soccer. <laughs> it's crazy um yeah, soccer is the great library killer this time of year yeah so um but i i will talk to my husband send me the contact person ellie and uh sure i will and if you need help we'll get an old 75 year old man to help you all things inside yeah 
Just okay, it. it's I got all the dolly. <laughs> dolly, yeah, but yeah, it's not on smooth pavement, Justin. I, I wouldn't get too excited about the dolly because mm -hmm. uh, it just not. Or, or you tested it out already? I haven't tested it out already. Um, yeah. But I will definitely be testing it out on October 5th. Right. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> in the beginning. So, uh, all right. But, uh, so, if you can, I'll, I'll send me the contact and I'll talk to somebody about trying to get okay. help. All right. Are we good with that? Yeah, I'm excited. Other friends business. Other old business. New business. We have a meeting. Did you okay? Did you already put out um Oh, what was it? The the humanities or the Smithsonian thing? Is that on there? Oh no, it's not. Did did we talked about that last month, didn't we? Yes. I no, I don't think so. Did we? Okay. Yes. Or maybe we put it in the minutes, and that's why I, it sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, that's probably it. Yes. All right. Never mind. All right. So our next meeting is October 22nd, 5 p.m. virtual. I'm not sure if I'm going to be here for that because we're leaving on the 23rd. It's an international flight. I'm not sure what my itinerary is. Where are is. you going? Oh, we're going to St. Martin. We've been going for over 30 years and... Could be our swan song. <laughs> we can't really afford it, but we're going to take one last trip. <laughs> so, Anyhow. So I might need cake. Yeah, I, sh I should be around. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, Kate. Kate. I thought you said you might need cake. <laughs> I could use I can always use cake. I could use some cake. Yeah. <laughs> a nice apple cake this time of year. Mm. Mm. There were lots of tasty treats at Hobbit Camp. <laughs> I bet. I see uh Dungeons and Dragons is back at a lot of the libraries are doing. Yes, I want to get that going here, but I'm still haven't figured out the best way to pay for it because there is a person who's willing to lead monthly like children's adventures, but it requires a subscription to a magazine, which mm. will not invoice you for their product. You have to pay via a card and then submit for reimbursement. And um, because it's because you're not buying a product and submitting for reimbursement, but you're buying a subscription that's moving forward and submitting for reimbursement, you can't do that because it's pre-committing funds to something that has bypassed the municipal procurement process. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to wait till the friends have an extra 150 bucks and then hit them up for a magazine. <laughs> Nudge. <laughs> Okay, are we, um, are we adjourning? Because I want to write down the time. Okay. So, 6.07. Um, a motion to okay. adjourn. So move. I'll move it. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. Aye. Vote. <laughs>